Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing great. Today I want to share some chocolatey treats with you all. I think they're perfect for this holiday season for me. This time of year is all about chocolate treats. They're my favorite. And I've got three varieties to share with you in this video. And one of them is a truffle, which is filled with a date and fennel paste. The second one will be a take on Rocky Road where I swap the sweets, the candy, for some biscuits, some crunchy nuts and dried fruit. And then the final one is a take on the peanut butter cup, but I will be using almond butter and top it with some crunchy toppings. And it's a very simple treat, but very effective and delicious in my opinion. So that's what I've got in store for you. But before we get into melting more chocolate than we've done all year until now, I want to give you a little last minute Christmas gift tip and thank our sponsor Ana Luisa all in one. So Ana Luisa is a New York based brand that create beautiful jewelry using recycled gold and silver. And they also use lab grown diamonds in their production, which is a more sustainable way of sourcing diamonds. They're also a carbon neutral company. I've had my pieces for a few years now and I really love them. I wear them every day. You see them in every video and they really bring my outfits to the next level. I would say for someone who has quite a simple style, I love that they bring it up a notch. And most recently I received two beautiful stacking sets. And the first one being this three ring set that has different textures, a different design to each ring, which make them really eye catching. And I used the size guide on Ana Luisa's website to figure out my size and it worked a treat. The second is this set of two gold chain necklaces. And they again have different designs, different textures going on. And I think they look really beautiful stacked like this, or you could add pendants to them, which also would look great, I think. And I really love stacking my Ana Luisa jewelry and the fact that they sell these sets just make that so much easier. And finally, I'm wearing some small huggy hoops with these orange gemstone little pendant dangling things. And I already have these in green and I wear them all the time. So I look forward to changing it up with this orange color. If you would like to learn more about Ana Luisa and check out their range, I will leave a link to their website in the description box and as always you can use my code goodeatings20 for 20% off a purchase. But now let's make some chocolate treats and the first one I want to show you are the date and fennel truffles. Um, but before we do that I just want to say that I use almonds in pretty much all of these three recipes but you could use seeds instead if you have a nut allergy. Uh, just to let you know. Uh, but the first thing we need to do is create the paste that will go inside the sort of chocolate covering. And for that, we need some dates. For this recipe, you need about 10 soft and gooey dates. And the first thing you'll want to do is remove the pip from the dates and then pop them in a food processor bowl equipped with an S blade. Two tablespoons of almond butter also goes into the bowl and this will help make a creamy texture that will form this paste that we will fill the truffles with. I'm also adding one tablespoon of melted coconut oil and a pinch of salt. Then I will just pulse this a few times to combine the ingredients and make a sort of rough paste. As these are date and fennel flavored, we now need to add the fennel. And I've got one teaspoon of whole fennel seeds that I add to a pestle and mortar and then I just go ham with the pestle to break that up as fine as I can. You could also use a mechanical spice grinder if you have it on hand, of course. I pop the ground up fennel seeds into the food processor bowl with the paste. And I'm also adding in half a cup worth of almond meal, which will help create a more firm paste. It also adds a lovely nutty flavor, which almost is reminiscent of marzipan. I blend all of this together on auto until it forms more or less a ball shape. And basically you just want this sticky texture that is not too wet, but still quite pliable that you can make little balls out of. But before you start putting your hand into the food processor bowl, remove the blade. And here you can see the texture of the filling. And what I do next is that I roll small balls, the diameter size of a small coin. And this mixture will make between 25 and 30 balls. 
I place each ball on a parchment paper lined plate or cutting board or tray and then when you've rolled all of the mixture you will want to set this in the freezer for at least 15 minutes to half an hour just to allow them to firm up and make it easier to dip them in chocolate later. And speaking of chocolate, you'll want to set up a double boiler or it's also called a bain marie to melt the chocolate. And to do this, you'll want to pour a little bit of water into a pot and place a bowl on top of that pot. The bowl needs to be big enough that it sits above the water and then you'll put the heat on and allow the steam to heat the bowl and into that bowl you'll put the chocolate and it'll melt without burning. For this recipe I use 100 grams worth of dark 70% chocolate and while I melted I removed the date and fennel filling balls from the freezer just so they can defrost the slightest little bit before I dip them in. I like to set up a little dipping station with the filling balls to one side, the chocolate in the middle and then another board lined with parchment paper to the other side. Then I drop one ball at a time into the bowl of chocolate and I use a teaspoon to just coat it in the chocolate. I gently place each ball on the new parchment paper and then I like to keep a little bowl of whole fennel seeds to the side as well so that I can top each ball with a few whole seeds. And you'll want to do this in batches of two or three because otherwise there's a great chance that the chocolate will start setting before you manage to drop the seeds on there. And that would mean that the seed wouldn't adhere. So just be a little bit aware when you're doing this. Once you've coated each date and fennel ball with the chocolate and topped it with the fennel seeds, those are your truffles done. You'll just want to let them set for about 15 to 20 minutes and then you're ready to serve them. You can also keep them in the fridge in an airtight container for a week or two and enjoy as you please. So these truffles probably have the most grown up flavor out of the three treats that I'm showing you today. And they were actually inspired by a chocolate bar that Rob and I had in Dubai when we spent time there, when his parents lived there. And there was this artisan chocolate brand called Mirsam that created these chocolate bars with this filling inside that had the flavor of date and fennel. And it really is a match made in heaven. And I think I've I uh, managed to get the flavor pretty similar to what I was inspired by, so if you like fennel, I think you will love these, give them a try. But now from the more grown-up flavor to probably the most um, kid-friendly flavored treat of today, I'm going to make my very loose take on Rocky Road, where I use biscuits instead of marshmallows. And I'm using some gluten-free store-bought biscuits here, but you can use any type that you like. Uh, one thing to think about though is that it's good if it has quite a crunchy snap texture rather than a gooey chewy texture because that works better in the mixture. Um, but other than that it's pretty straightforward so let's just get into it. The reference recipe I used to create this combination was written in weight so I have also measured my ingredients in weight for this. So I've got 75 grams of biscuits that I break into smaller pieces. And I'm also adding in 75 grams of dried cranberries. I have also measured out a teaspoon of flaked sea salt, but I'm only adding half at this stage and keeping the other half for topping later. Then I set the bowl to the side and I grab a bowl of 75 grams worth of salted roasted almonds. And I'm just going to roughly chop those before adding them to the bowl as well. And these three elements, the almonds, the cranberries and the biscuits, will be the crunchy filling of this chocolate encased treat. I actually like to set some of the almonds and cranberries aside for later for topping, but I forgot to show that. So I just thought I'd mention it. Next, I'm just greasing a loaf tin that I will set the chocolate treat in and then I'm going to melt 150 grams worth of dark 70% chocolate along with 30 grams worth of vegan margarine as well as 45 grams of maple syrup and I'm doing this again in a double boiler or a bain marie. You'll want to gently fold it together as it melts using a spatula. Don't stir it too much but just fold slowly and gently. Mm-hmm. 
Once the chocolate mixture is completely melted and combined, I like to toss and mix all the crunchy bits before pouring the chocolate mixture over it all and then folding it in gently using my spatula until it looks like all the bits are covered in the chocolate. Once everything is well combined, I'll transfer the mixture into my greased tin and greasing it just allows the chocolate to come out easier later, but you could also use parchment paper if you prefer. And then I'll just use the spatula again to press the mixture down and it might look like it's a bit dry to begin with, but believe me, everything will stick together and just press it down until it looks more or less homogenous. Then I top it with the almonds and cranberries I set aside as well as the leftover over sea salt flakes and I like to also press this down so that it actually sticks to the chocolate when I let it set and then I place it in the fridge for a couple of hours or you could leave it for 24 hours or a few days even if you wish to set before you serve it When it's set, it will look something like this and I like to use a knife to loosen the edges before I turn it out. It actually doesn't really come out before you do this, so just gently use a knife to score the sides and then turn it out of the tin. Then using a sharp knife, I like to slice it into long bars, but you could also cut each slice into two or three for a more bite-sized approach. I think these treats end up looking beautiful from every angle and they will last in the fridge for a couple of weeks or you could freeze them if you want to make them ahead for an occasion. You could also play around with the flavor and add things like orange zest to the mixture which would add a delicious extra touch. The combination in this treat is deliciously moorish. I could eat the whole slab probably if I didn't reach some sort of nausea <laughs> after eating about three uh, but they are very yummy because they have a lot of different textures a lot of different flavors so each bite will have something slightly different which i think is really nice and with that said let's move on to the third and final treat for today it's my almond butter cups and they are so easy to make if um, you're a little bit lazy in the kitchen then this is the one for you and pretty much all you need is some chocolate some coconut oil and some almond butter, but I will also top it with some slivered almonds just for some crunch and a nice look. So let's make them. To fill the butter cups, I'm using a quarter cup of smooth almond butter. And the first thing I want to do is set it in the freezer for about five to 10 minutes, just to allow it to firm up a little bit. In the meantime, I'm preparing a muffin tray with some liners, and this mixture will make six butter cups. So I'm placing six liners into the muffin tin and then I'm going to melt 175 grams worth of dark 70% chocolate along with one tablespoon of coconut oil. This will make the chocolate really silky and a little bit softer as it sits, which is good for the buttercup. When I make these chocolate butter cups, I like to use a more shallow bowl in the double boiler because I will use a spoon to spoon out chocolate later and it just makes it easier when the bowl has a shorter edge. Once the chocolate is completely melted and combined with the coconut oil, I spoon one tablespoon of chocolate into each liner in the muffin tray and this will make the base layer for the almond butter cup. When I've filled all the liners, I just like to make sure that they're sitting pretty straight in the muffin tray. And then I tap it a few times against the counter to remove any air bubbles. Then it's time to set it in the fridge for about five minutes, just to make it a little bit more firm for when we will fill it with the almond butter. After the five minutes, I remove the chocolate from the fridge and the almond butter from the freezer. And then I use a teaspoon to dollop the almond butter into each liner with the chocolate at the bottom. And I try to land it as much in the middle of the liner as possible so that it doesn't flow to the very edge of it. Because if it does flow to the edge, it will stick out of the butter cup. And you really do want the chocolate to encase all of the almond butter. 
Once I've spread the almond butter evenly across the six butter cups, I'm going to top each one of them with a tablespoon and a half of the melted chocolate this time. And I try my best to just spread it out as much as possible and do this quite gently, not to disturb what's already in the liner too much. buttercups that little bit of extra I'm topping them with some toasted slivered almonds and I really love to have this crunch with the creaminess I'm also topping it with some flaked sea salt because I love chocolate and salt together and almond butter too but this is totally optional once they're filled and you've topped them you'll want to tap them again against the counter which I forgot and then I set them in the fridge again for about 20 minutes or until they're completely set and you can also store them in the fridge in an airtight container once they're set for at least a week. Here you can see a small bubble of almond butter that has seeped through the chocolate and that's what happens if you don't tap the cups before you set them the second time. So don't be like me and remember to tap them before you place them in the fridge the second time. That concludes this video of three chocolate treats that I think will brighten anyone's day or at least I hope it would. I hope it will brighten your day. I hope you'll try them and enjoy them and uh, also don't forget to check out Ana Luisa in the description box if you are interested and with that said I want to wish all of you who are celebrating a very Merry Christmas. I will see you after Christmas so enjoy the holiday whether you are celebrating or not and I'll see you then. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care! Bye!